principles of design color how do you feel when you see this image in this way now how do you feel when you see the same image in this way whoa that is the power of color choosing the right color blend is so important in your design because it can cause the viewer to either get irritated and quickly look away or to feel so drawn to it and admire it to look at its content this is why we want to learn about colors in this video so first and foremost what is color color is the property possessed by an object that produces different sensations on the eye as a result of the way it reflects or emits light we will be looking at the following topics that affect color theory in graphic design under color theory we have color categories next one is color terms color psychology and finally color blending and contrast now let's start with the first one color categories colors are categorized into three major groups starting with the first one primary colors these are the basic colors from which every other color are obtained by mixing the three primary colors include red yellow and blue secondary colors these are colors created by the equal mixture of two primary colors for example red and yellow mixed together gives the secondary color orange red and blue mixed together make purple and blue and yellow mixed together make green now the third and final one tertiary colors tertiary colors are a combination of primary and secondary colors now going to the second topic under color theory we go to color terms now we will briefly be describing the following color terminologies which are important the first one is hue next one is shade next one is tint and next one is saturation all right welcome to this short recording to practically explain the color terminologies as listed before this recording and remember we said that there are some important color terminologies such as hue shade tint saturation and color value we are going to be practically explaining these terms with this recording now as you can see we have a red circle in this workspace here by the way i'm using photoshop okay and with what i'm about to explain you know several standard graphic software will have though unique but similar way of you know applying these you know effects to explain you know what we are about to explain now this red hue okay is simply the pure or base form of a specific color whether primary secondary or tertiary without any excess or lesser amount of light or shade now i'm talking about hue okay i'm defining what hue is okay the pure color so in this case this is a pure this is a hue of a red there's no excess amount of um 
light or lesser amount of light whether light or shadow on this hue currently okay so that's what we mean by hue now to use photoshop to explain what tint or light in, in some other cases it's referred to as light okay and shade okay in some other cases it's referred to as shadow what it means we'll be using a a function called levels in photoshop to explain it so i'll just quickly hold down control and press l to bring up the levels panel okay now if you look down here you will see this bar okay that has a node here just under the white area and a node here just under the black area if i wanted to add a tint to this pure hue to this hue of red by the way a tint is a hue with a certain level of only white added to it okay i will move to add a tint to this i will move this node you can see it's going from this shade to a lighter shade that is a whiter a level a certain level of white so if you watch as i move it now you can see that it's getting brighter it's getting lighter it's just that a, a certain level of white is added to the you know red okay and the more the level of white added to it the more you know it now becomes white if i move it to the end okay now bringing it back you see that it's back to its pure form that the hue now shade explaining shade now is the opposite of tint a shade is a hue with a certain level of only black added to it so if i move from this point and i begin to move it you see that it starts getting a bit darker because more more of black is added to the you know red hue and if i keep adding it you see that it becomes entirely black now this is one way to explain shade and hue in you know photoshop there's also another way which i want to use okay and that will explain to you what saturation really means okay now i want to use this apple image okay that i inserted this is the original color of the image as i inserted it i'll simply go to image okay i'm not active on the image i'll go to image adjustments and i go to this place that says hue saturation you can see that it sounds familiar so you can see that the current level of hue is zero okay so it's in its pure state okay now there's what we call saturation you can over saturate saturate an an element whether it's an image or you know or shape or object whatever element design element you have okay you can over saturate it or you can desaturate it if i over saturate it is as though i'm adding more more vividness to the color so if i move it this way if i increase the saturation notice that the red is getting more vivid and vibrant you can see it's getting more vivid okay because i'm over saturating it from zero to hundred that's the maximum now the same way if i return it to zero okay and i desaturate it means meaning that i'm I'm taking it lesser it, it's it's a it's as though it's removing the color from the image okay and until it removes the color until it becomes grayscale you can see it's more or less like black and white now you see so this is what we mean by you know saturation you can either over saturate an element or desaturate it so that explains saturation so now to explain color value i want to switch to another software called corel draw okay because it has different color values you know types color value types that can broadly explain what color value 
is okay now you know color value simply refers to the degree of lightness or darkness of a color in the digital space you know the value of a color is commonly represented in either hexadecimal rgb which is red green and blue or cmyk now to explain this let me go to the part that reveals the color value of this red circle here now look at this part you can see it's showing you the current hexadecimal value of this red it is currently hash ed3237 and here it's showing you the cmyk value of this red now this cmyk okay is is a kind of color mode okay that is suitable for works that you want to print out because printers usually work with cmyk color mode okay now if you wanted to do a work for majorly digital or web or online for digital purposes you are not printing it then you will switch to the rgb color mode you now you will see that the rgb color mode okay of the same red is 237 red green of 50 and blue of 55 okay so these are the different color mode types that we have that will tell you the part the specific you know color mode um you know color value of an element now if i switch to this you can see i've changed it to another shade of red take note that the color value has changed you see that the color values have changed if i switch to cmyk now you see that the color values okay cyan magenta yellow um what's the key again black you see cyan magenta yellow and black so it shows you the 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 color values of them i i hope you've you know really understood these important color terminologies now let's quickly go back to our educative video on color as a principle of graphics design thank you very much now going to the third topic under color theory color psychology this is a study of how different colors determine human behavior it shows us how color plays a role in conveying important non-verbal creating moods and even influencing the decisions people make setting colors and their different shades convey certain meanings for example some notable companies with a blue logo are often trying to convey that they have characteristics such as dependability and trustworthiness you will also notice that marketing materials for agriculture commonly have green as their major color now because this green represents nature even you get to see color red dominating the design of matters that have to do with love before you go ahead with your design you will do well to check out which color best fits the message of your design Now let's go to the final topic, color harmony and contrast. Color harmony refers to aesthetically pleasing and harmonious color combinations based on geometric relationships on the color wheel. From this definition, we need to understand what the color wheel is. The color wheel is a circle with different colors or colored sectors used to show the relationship between colors. 
we will be focusing on the red, green and blue color wheel since it is designed for online use. Now there are several color schemes, but the most commonly used color scheme or harmony as it is also called include monochromatic colors, complementary colors, split complementary colors, analogous colors scheme and triadic color scheme. Now let's go to the first one monochromatic color scheme this is a type of color scheme that focuses on one hue and its different shades unlike a few misconceptions that monochromatic schemes are dull and lifeless they can indeed look mature and vibrant if you use them properly like in the website examples shown currently. Now next one, complementary colors. These are colors positioned on the opposite ends of the color wheel. It is desirable in a number of design instances because the two opposite colors create a high contrast. Speaking of contrast, let us use this opportunity to describe what contrast means as a principle of design. Contrast simply is the visible difference in the properties of the design elements that make up your design. Often when referencing contrast, most people think of color contrast but there are several ways to apply contrast in your design. Examples include placing a black font on a white background instead of a lighter font like yellow on a white background. This is because you can see that because of the high contrast between black and white, the font stands out of the background. But because of the low contrast between yellow and white, you can't clearly see the font. Another example of contrast is making the heading of text significantly bigger than the body of text. Now going back to complementary color schemes. Complementary color schemes is ideal for making something stand out and create eye-catching elements in your design. The third one, split complementary color scheme. This type of color scheme has one key color and two colors adjacent to that key color's complement in the color wheel. They create approachable and intuitive designs and work exceptionally well with artwork. The fourth one, analogous color scheme. This consists of three hues all positioned next to each other on the color wheel. They are widely used in decorating an inter interior design and they give the eye a soothing effect. Going to the fifth one, triadic color schemes. These are combinations of three colors evenly spaced on the color wheel. They tend to be easier on the eye than complementary color scheme. So there you have it. These schemes can help guide you to properly choose colors for your design elements. Alternatively, you could visit sites like colors.co which greatly help your decision making for color combinations. So that is it for this video, wonderful viewer. In the next video, we'll be discussing the final major principle of design called typography. Stay tuned.